All right. Hello, everybody. We are back. Remember this back from the COVID days. Me and yes. Drew, the boys are back, and it's time for my NFL power rankings. This has been a fan favorite for a long time on the NW Sportscast. Drew here is going to react to that and tell me what he thinks. So I'm doing a little bit of a tier system. Um, and the first tier I've called it uh Caleb, because these are the teams that realistically are gonna be looking for Caleb Williams at the end of the year. So first up, the Cardinals. Oh. They're terrible. I mean, they have a new head coach. They traded away DeAndre Hopkins. They traded Isaiah Simmons. Kyler Murray might be out for the season. Joshua Dobbs is their starting quarterback. I, this is the worst. And they play in the toughest division of the NFC. So I think they're the front runners for Caleb Williams. Also got the Commanders and the Falcons in there as well, uh, as far as the tanking for Caleb goes. Uh, I think that uh, the Falcons slightly higher – uh, just because they play in a, such a bad division that they might accidentally win a few games. Um, but the Commanders are starting Sam Howell. The Falcons are starting Desmond Ritter. What that tells me is that neither of these teams are serious about being competitive, which is smart. I mean, if you're a bad team, try to go get a franchise-changing quarterback. That's what these three teams are trying to do. Yeah. All right, the next tier, this is a QB or coach question marks. These are teams that could have what they're looking for at quarterback, but I'm just not sure got the Houston Texans. Is C.J. Stroud and D'Amico Ryans both new uh, to the team? I'm not sure if these guys are going to be any good. Uh, same goes with Jordan Love on the Packers. I have no idea if Jordan Love is going to be any good. Um, so I'm, I don't think they're going to be very good. Uh, Chicago Bears, I'm still waiting to see Justin Fields be the MVP candidate that people think he can be. And I'm not sold on Matt Eberflus as a coach. Um, the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield, uh, I, I don't believe in him. And then we got the Colts with Richardson. I, I do think that the Colts have some pieces as well as the Panthers with uh, Bryce Young. So those are the two teams that are a little bit higher up on my tier just because I think that maybe they have some other pieces that could get that could get this team to be a little competitive. But still, I don't know about the quarterbacks for any of these teams. Got anything? Yeah. Yeah. I think you got you got teams like uh, the Buccaneers. So I, obviously I don't think this is their future. But, hey, there's some bright spots here, you know. You got you got the Panthers. Uh, you obviously have the Texans. Um, Justin Fields is probably the best quarterback in this six here. Um, really, really, you know, Justin Fields is super high ceiling. If he can work on his accuracy, he'll be he'll be a really good um, quarterback this year. Uh, but the the very interesting team in this one for me is the Packers. Um, you know, a historically really really good franchise. Um, Jordan Love. You know, for a few years we haven't been able to see him. This could have helped him out. Um, this could have maybe been a detriment to him. We'll have to see. And I, I think I'm, I'm really going to look out for the Packers. I think they have the potential to um, move up in this power ranking. But I think it's a good spot for right now. Yeah, I mean, the Bears just slightly ahead. And they, obviously, that's a big week one matchup. I think the Bears probably pull that off. But I wouldn't be surprised if they don't. I will say two of these quarterbacks are going in with better weapons this year than they ever have, right? Justin Fields, they got David Moore. Uh, they also brought in uh, – they brought in somebody – I think they drafted somebody else. So the Bears have upgraded their weapons. And then the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield has never had receivers like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. So true, uh, true. The, both of those quarterbacks with their new upgraded receivers could potentially be better than we've seen. Next up, I've got uh, reason for concern. These are teams that, you know, uh, I, there's some good, but there's also definitely reason for concern. I start with the Chargers. Okay, the Chargers, this is why I'm concerned. They play in a very tough division. I think Denver and Las Vegas are both better, and they're coming off of the most embarrassing playoff game of in the history of the NFL, right? Brandon Staley and Justin Herbert were up 28 to nothing, and they lost that game against the Jaguars. I think there's reason for concern here with the Chargers. Um, yeah, New York Giants. What's my concern here? Uh, the Giants were very, very lucky last year as far as an easy schedule, and they were super, super healthy. They had barely any injuries. I feel like this team is still a Saquon Barkley injury away from being bad, so there's concern with the Giants. The Patriots. What's the concern with the Patriots? Well, the, they got to figure out the quarterback situation, A, because Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi, I mean, who's it going to be? But also, their offensive line, they have just signed three new offensive linemen in the past two weeks. So they clearly don't know what's going on there. They may be starting multiple rookies. Uh, that's not a very Bill Belichick type of thing. And we've got the Titans. Reason for concern here, obviously, I mean, they, they lost seven games in a row to end the season last year. Uh, and obviously five of those games, they didn't have Tannehill. 
But now Tannehill's back. They have DeAndre Hopkins. Could they pop off? They probably could, but there's also a chance they keep getting worse. And then the Miami Dolphins, and obviously the concern here is to his health. Uh, it, it, he's he's maybe a concussion away from retirement. That's what the reports are saying. So I'm not buying into any of these teams yet, but I see you know there's pros and there's a lot of cons. I think the Chargers. I think they they gotta be at the 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 next tier or at very least the best team in this tier. Um, I think you gotta put the Seahawks in reason for concern. Personally. No, no. I think I think the Seahawks are worse than both the Chargers and the Dolphins. Disagree, um, disagree. I mean, Chargers have, in my mind, a top five, top seven quarterback. Um, and then the Dolphins have, you know, skill positions in football right now has been more important than ever. And they have they have guys like Tyreek Hill, maybe the most explosive wide receiver um, the league has right now. And then you got Jalen Waddle, who in some, some people's eyes is the top 10 wide receiver. As their second wide receiver, yes, Jalen no. Waddle. Jalen Waddle. I is, would not say top ten, but Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle is tough. Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle will be would be wide receiver one on almost any team. Um, but yeah, I, I think Patriots, Giants, Titans. I would almost remove the Titans down a tier. Um, I might wow. do the same. I might do the same thing for the Patriots. Honestly, um, Matt Jones as your starter. Bill Belichick seems to not been able to really figure out his um offense since Brady left. Um, I, I think the Giants are appropriate here, but yeah, I, I think you gotta move um the Chargers and the Dolphins up and you gotta bring some teams like the Patriots and the Titans down. I mean, that's my opinion, but um I, I think the Chargers just especially the Chargers, too good, too good. You know, they they were very close to winning a playoff game. Obviously, it, it was embarrassing, it was a tough loss, but hey, they showed that at their best and you know their dominant football team. And, and I don't think being in a good division or a good conference should really hurt your standings in the power rankings, but that's just me. Yeah. I you know. I will say the one team on this list on this tier with a proven quarterback who I believe in is the chargers. Um, but again, we've seen Phillip rivers a consensus top 10 quarterback for many, many years and consensus and every single year they would underperform. It's just kind of a chargers thing. And then obviously, yeah, the Patriots have a great head coach, the Titans as well. I love Mike Vrabel, but, you know, some of these coaches, quarterbacks, just not sure on. So the next tier, this is competitive. These are teams I view as competitive. I don't necessarily think these are playoff teams. I think they're going to be close. And not that the other teams on the cause for concern also won't be competitive. I think the Chargers are very competitive as well. But these are teams that I view as, like, slightly more competitive. we got the Denver Broncos. Uh, I think they're going to be better. I, I'm not going to put them any higher yet. Uh, I have to see it. I have to see it first. We got the Steelers. Uh, they they get um, they get to be in this tier simply because we have never seen Mike Tomlin have a losing record. They're going to be competitive. We know they're going to be competitive. I don't think they're going to be anything more. Uh, the Vikings, I think they're going to regress, but obviously they're still a good team. They still have Justin Jefferson. They still have Kirk Cousins, who is a good quarterback. Um, but – you know, not as good, I think, as last year. They got really lucky last year. And then the Baltimore Ravens. Look, uh, they have a new offensive coordinator. Uh, they have Oda Beckham Jr. They're hedging their bets on OBJ to save their offense. Uh, and maybe he will, uh, as well as Zay Flowers. So they have a rookie and a veteran who they've brought in to hopefully save their passing game with a new coordinator. The Ravens could jump. I will say this. The Ravens could jump really high if the new offense works the way they hope. But, you know, who knows if OBJ and Zay Flowers are going to be as good as people hope. Uh, this could definitely be a, a rough season for the Ravens. Yeah, I would agree with three of the four teams here. I think we can guess on the one that we don't I don't agree on. Um, the I, Steelers. I, the Steelers should not be in competitive. They, they won be, nine games last year with Kenny Pickett be, and Mitch it Trubisky. There should be a reason to concern. If nine wins is the, is the standard for competitive, you have to put the Dolphins and the Chargers in competitive. If you're telling me that the Dolphins and Chargers aren't going to compete this year, but the Steelers are, man, that's that's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow for me. I definitely think the Steelers are a worse team than both um, both of the other two teams. You look at the Broncos, who there's only you know there's only way to go is up. Um, so much pressure on Russell Wilson though. Again, we'll see how he handles it. We got the Vikings again. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get as lucky as they did last year. What like 
they started out like nine and oh or something and like not and like one one score games or something crazy it was some crazy stat like that um but they picked up they picked up you know jordan addison in the draft uh to pair with justin jefferson because they lost adam Thielen, i believe um and th- they'll be good they'll be a they'll be a solid team but again will kirk cousins be able to perform those big leverage games we'll see and then the ravens I do agree with you. I think the rest of the team is is okay. Their defense is all right. They have some okay weapons as far as J.K. Dobbins goes. Um, you know, and and obviously Odell at his best is a really good wide receiver, but he's getting obviously on the wrong wrong into thirty for Odell. Um, we'll have to see, but I think I would agree with you. I think Lamar Jackson's that good that you have to put them in competitive. So, all right. So we move on. Uh, the next tier. First round exits. These are teams that I think uh, I currently view them as playoff teams. Um, and obviously, if you've watched, uh, I'm I'm guessing you haven't, Drew. Maybe some of our viewers have my uh, second half of the season predictions that came out earlier today. Uh, you would know this, but these are my first round exits. These are teams that I think are going to make the playoffs, but they're not winning more than one game. First off, the New Orleans Saints, they're only here because they're going to win their division. But I mean, they have no business being in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, they're they're not winning any more than one playoff game. Raiders, uh, I think if Jimmy G stays healthy, the Raiders are a playoff team. I know, and the, and this is part of the reason why I have the Broncos and the Chargers down below. I view the Raiders as a good team. Look, they have a top five running back in Josh Jacobs, who has led the league in rushing yards multiple times. They have Darren Waller, probably a top five tight end. They have um, Devontae Adams, a top five wide receiver. And they have Jimmy G, who wins 75% of his starts. So if Jimmy G stays healthy, I think the Raiders can make the playoffs as a wild card. Well, the Raiders have a good team. Uh, They're the only team I can think of with a top five tight end receiver and running back. And then we've got the LA Rams. I think that the Rams are going to be better this year. I don't think they're going to be back to Super Bowl level, but, you know, McVay is still a great coach. Stafford is a good quarterback. Cooper Cup. Great receiver, so I think there's still a lot of pieces, and obviously Aaron Donald as well. Uh, this is the Cleveland Browns. I think Deshaun Watson is going to have a decent season, but still, I'm not going to go any more than a first-round exit. And the last team of my first-round exits, this is a team that a lot of people are predicting to make it as far as the Super Bowl, but I have been burned by this team too many times. Viewers of the podcast, if you know from two years ago, last year, you've seen me be so much higher on this team, and this team has burned me. The Dallas Cowboys, I can't predict them to go any more than a first-round exit because I have seen them choke in the playoffs every single year of my life. So I'm not going to predict them to go any further. I know people say Dak's the best QB in the NFC, but I can't go any further than first round. Yeah. So I hate this this tier personally. Um, I agree with one of the five teams here. Um, I think it's the Cowboys. I think Mr. Interception Dak Prescott um will has too has too much talent around him to not make the playoffs or at least be close to the playoffs. So I agree with you there. But if you look at the other four teams, will the Saints make the playoffs? Probably, but do they deserve to be in this tier? No. But I think you agree with me there that they get yeah. lucky because so because so I think we're on the same wavelength, but on that team, it's just it's yeah. kind of hard to put them here. But then the Raiders, there's just no way in the AFC that they're gonna do anything. They're not gonna make the playoffs. Seventy five percent. Jimmy G. Jimmy G is way worse than 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 guys like Justin Herbert or whoever else. Like Herbert's never been to a Super Bowl. Jimmy G is Jimmy G. Like, there's a reason why the Niners don't have Jimmy G. Also, anymore. also remember Jimmy G. Josh McDaniels both came out of New England. They know each other already. Great working relationship. The Raiders are not going to be. And they a, brought in Chandler Jones. The Raiders are not going to play off team. But again, okay. I don't think as much as the next two teams, the Rams, who outside of a few elite players, and granted they are elite, um, arguably the best wide receiver you know, and arguably the best defensive player of our generation. Um, and then Matthew Stafford. But outside of that, you got, like, very, very few young talent pieces that can progress. They were bad last year. They should be worse this – they should be worse this year if, um, you know, obviously Cooper Cup, if he stays healthy and Matt Stafford stays healthy, that'll be a different story. But, you know, everybody else should have regressed. Like, I don't see any bright spots to this team – 
they they're in a, they're in a division which um the Seahawks are going to be pretty good the Niners are going to be pretty good um they'll hopefully beat up on the Cardinals but no they sh- they should have been a couple tiers ago they should have been reasons to concern or or whatever the QB one was cuz i just i don't know i don't know if i believe Matt Stafford maybe his time has come um and then the Browns put them a couple tiers back too uh just I don't I don't like this. Deshaun Watson hasn't played football like good football in a couple of years. Um, yeah, they have a couple they have a couple OK pieces on offense. But man, like I just don't see how you have the Raiders and the Browns in this division, but not the not the Dolphins and the Chargers. It's, it's astonishing to me because I think both the Chargers and the Dolphins I could see making the Super Bowl and I cannot see the Raiders or the Browns. So. All right. Well, I can't see any of those teams in the Super Bowl, but this is where we come to my top nine teams. I think there's nine teams that could make the Super Bowl. The Seahawks should also be in this tier. I think so. I think they so, should have been in last tier or this tier. So this is, this is my top nine. They are in order. So the last ones were like kind of ordered, but not really. These ones, I did think about the order. Top nine. Here we go. So number nine is the Bengals. This is it. These are all young, talented teams that I think could make a run. Now, here's my concern on the Bengals, okay? The Bengals, Joe Burrow's health, we're not sure about. He's Now, he's going to start, we think, week one. Not sold on his health. Also, Joe Mixon's getting older. Their running game is not going to be as good as it ha- as it was last year. They still do have two of the best receivers in the league. So, I think that the, the Bengals are going to be good. I think they are winning their division, and they're going to be in the mix for Super Bowl. I have the Detroit Lions, number eight. Look, the Lions were seven and two in their last nine games last year. They're a good team. And um, they I, I really love Amon Ross St. Brown and Jared Goff. Their connection last year was incredible. So I think the Lions are gonna be good. Uh my number seven team, Super Bowl loss, the Eagles. High on the Seahawks. I'm very high on the Seahawks. You know what? But like, I'll get to that. But the Eagles are still gonna be a good football team. Um, Jalen Hurts, as long as he stays healthy, uh, I think the Eagles can go as far as they want. Um, we got the Jaguars at number six. I, I'm really high on the Jags. And you have Doug Peterson, Trevor Lawrence. That's a great quarterback coach combination. Calvin Ridley's coming back this year. Uh, Christian Kirk, solid by receiver two, ETN at running back, and the defense that we saw the defense, which was terrible the first half of last season. The defense came back and played a very strong second half. And then, obviously, this is a resilient team. We saw that in their comeback win against the Chargers. I think they have an easy division. They're going to soar to a very high record, possibly even a number one seed. I think the Jaguars can win that number one seed. Um, And then, finally, at number five, I have the Seattle Seahawks. Look, this is a very – this. all five of these teams meet the standard for young and talented because they have a lot of young players and talented players. The Eagles are the only one that also could be considered a veteran team because they have a lot of veterans on the defensive side of the ball. But Seattle, look at this. Three potential top 20 receivers with Najigma now in the mix. They have Kenneth Walker, and I believe Zach Charbonnet is going to be very good as well. So the run game should be good. Charles Cross, Abraham Lucas, Manning the O-line. That's just going to be even better than it was last year. The Legion of Boom is back with Tariq Woolen, with Jamal Adams, who's now healthy with Quandre Diggs, and with our new number five overall pick in Witherspoon. And then, obviously, look at Geno Smith, what he did last year. I think he can replicate that. Pete Carroll, still a great coach, an all-time great coach. So I see no weak spots on this team other than potentially if the new guys on the D-line don't work out. uh, We could suffer from the same Achilles heel as last year, which is uh, letting Christian McCaffrey and other good running backs run all over us. That's why we're not any higher but I think number five is a good spot for us, honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm a believer this year. I don't hate this. Um, I think the Bengals should be where the Seahawks are. I think the Eagles should be in the next tier. Um, we have the Jaguars, but I'm higher on the Chargers than the, J- the Jaguars this year. Um, Jaguars barely snuck into the playoffs, barely snuck past the Chargers. I, I think the Chargers just collapsed. I don't know. Uh, the Jaguars played good in that second half, but and then the Lions, I think you gotta put them into your back. Um, they, they just haven't, they didn't make the playoffs last year. Like, I, I think they're, I think they're a first turn exit, or they might not even make the playoffs. But I like, I like where you have the Lions. Um, yeah, super talented team, young team, 
room to develop. But right now, you can't put the lines here if they haven't made the playoffs. Bengals, you know, a year removed to the Super Bowl. You got arguably the uh, second best quarterback in the whole league. Um, I think behind Patrick Mahomes, lots of people would argue that. Jalen Hurts, also arguable top two quarterback in the league. So I think both those teams should be in the next year just based off that alone, based off how they've been in the Super Bowl um, within the last two years. And then the Seahawks, I think, should be in the tier right before this. Um, I think they could sneak past the tier or it could sneak past the first round, but um, I don't think they can make the Super Bowl. I don't think they are going to even make the NFC Championship game this year. Yes, they are a really good, young, talented team, but I'm not a Geno Smith believer. I don't think he has what it takes to to bring this team Ugh. to the front. So, I mean, that's just me. Uh, so, I think the Seahawks should be down tier. And, and this young and talented tier, I would put the Dolphins and I would put the Chargers. So, I think that's how that's how highly I think of the Chargers and Dolphins compared to you. I put the so Lions. You would you would replace Lions and Seahawks with Chargers and Dolphins. And I put the Seahawks and the Lions down a tier, and then I'd put <clears> last year I'd put like the Rams down. And I'd put the Bengals and I put the Eagles up a tier. So like this whole tier, I yeah. okay. disagree on. Like I I think you're close, but I, I would disagree on most. The Bengals at nine is crazy. Like the Seahawks are not better than the Bengals. If you if they play week one, the Vegas has the Bengals as a touchdown favorite, and I think that's where they deserve to be. With an injured Joe Burrow, I think the Seahawks would win. Go but I, but, Go but but I will say that, that we do play the Bengals. Um, I think it's like week thirteen, and that will be a close game. But let's move on. Two more tiers to go. This tier I have not. I have it titled AFC East: The Battle for Second Place. Why do I have it named this? Because these two teams, I already know, this two teams is going to be the number one storyline of the season. Whether who's going to come out on top of the AFC East? Is it going to be the Bills or the Jets? Right. That's going to be the number one storyline in my eyes because it's going to be Rodgers and Allen, two of the best quarterbacks. They're going to be going at it. But in the end, it's going to be irrelevant because both of these teams will lose in the playoffs to obviously Patrick Mahomes. So this, the best either of these two teams can do is the championship. I have the Jets ranked just slightly ahead because if there's one thing I know is that Aaron Rodgers is really good at getting to the championship game and losing. He's done it five times with the Packers. So I'm going to bet that it happens again with the Jets. Look, the Jets are a good team. They had a lot of young. They had the offensive and defensive rookie of the year last year. So I do love the Jets this year a lot more than some people. And I still think the Bills are good, but I don't think they are a Super Bowl. Uh, Obviously, they could make the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to. Um, And obviously, uh, for those of you guys who have watched my my videos, you already know who my Super Bowl is going to be. But let's. uh, what does Drew think about this one? Yeah, I like the I like where the Bills are at. I think the Jets should be down a tier. Once again, just what have they done for me recently? Not much. I know Rodgers is in the equation, but yeah. Rodgers didn't look great last year. You know, I, I know he has obviously a super long track record, but last year Rodgers was not him. And listen, the Jets got some young talent. Obviously, Garrett Wilson, um, a super young defense. Aaron Rodgers should be good for them, but We'll see. Rodgers, first time out of Green Bay. Will it work? I don't know. So I'm not willing to put them in the top five teams as of right now. I think the Bills, you got right, though. All right. And finally, my Super Bowl, Chiefs, 49ers. I think these are the two most complete rosters in the NFL. Um, you have and the 49ers above the Chiefs, I see. I, I have the 49ers winning the Super Bowl just because it is so hard to repeat as champions. Um, in the NFL, obviously the Chiefs, they tried to repeat and they failed. And I think they're going to fail again at their repeat. Uh, but I think they are making it back. And I think the 49ers, I think we, the 49ers are the Seahawks' biggest competition. A, because they're going to be the best, their most complete rush in the NFC. But B, because they match up so well against us, as we saw last year in the playoffs, as we're probably going to see again this year in the playoffs. I, I just... I think the 49ers are a really good team. And, you know, Brock Purdy, I don't know if he's going to be great, but what I do know is that he is an elite game manager. And if you put an elite game manager with surrounded by that roster, it, it's so, I mean, it's what we saw in New England for so many years with Brady, I think. 
yeah so we have a kind of interesting thing happening it's like a it's like a, a mix of like a tier list and a power ranking and kind of like a a prediction of the season type thing yeah so like i will agree with you i i like the super bowl pick a lot but are the 49ers the best team in the nfl no i don't think they're a top three team in the nfl um i think you got really the, i think you put the chiefs uh you put the bills and I would probably put the Bengals or the Eagles as that third team. Okay. Um, I think they're probably fifth, honestly, behind the, 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 yeah, those four teams I just listed, but do I hate the Super Bowl pick? No. Um, the chiefs, you got to put up one because they won the Super Bowl last year. You have Patrick Mahomes, they have Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey. I think when all of a sudden, uh, and Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey is going to rival um, Gronk and Brady as the best tight end QB duo of all time. I think they're that good. I think Patrick Mahomes might go down as the best quarterback of all time when all is said and done. I think he's just – he's spectacular. Um, you got you to gotta show me that you can beat Patrick Mahomes before he gets deep thrown as number one here. But, no, I like, I like the 49ers. I'd probably move him down a tier. Um, I would put the – again, it's kind of weird because I don't think they're a top two team, but I do think they'll make the Super Bowl. So, it's like this is the appropriate tier for them, but also I don't yeah. think they're the second best team. So yeah, you know this, this isn't bad, but I don't, I don't, I don't think you should put the Chiefs below the 49ers right now when it's Brock Purdy versus Patrick Mahomes. So yeah, that that that's very fair. Um, one thing interesting to note: Travis Kelsey is not likely to play now in Week One. So um, interesting storyline. Yeah, first game Mahomes has ever played without Kelsey. And we just got the notification from Zoom that we are out of time, which is perfect because we just finished. So we're going to call this one a episode. Let us know down in the comments, guys. How how stupid am I? I mean, I know I, I like to have some wild takes, but how stupid it was this video? Comment okay. down below. Like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram. We're going to continue posting some reels as well over there. So a lot of fun things coming your way on uh our very own version of prediction week. I'm also hopefully going to be doing some rankings, uh, wide receiver rankings, quarterback rankings, uh, head, head coach rankings. Um, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. And I'm so excited for the first game on Thursday. And the Mariners. Post -game and, show. and the awesome. Mariners watch it. <laughs> We're not doing great. All right. That's yeah. it.